I appear here to discuss about the sonnet of Shakespeare, a particular sonnet, sonnet number 18. It's one of the uh, famous and celebrated sonnet of Shakespeare where we find uh, manifestation and depiction and expression of love and it's a love poem but not love poem of traditional type. Here we find Shakespeare admiring his friend's beauty um, in um, a Shakespearean way uh, but his friend was not a lady but he was a man and herein lies the singularity, the uniqueness, the difference of uh, it. It is a different love poem. Uh, usually love poems um, are addressed to the opposite sex, uh, but here the address is not made for the opposite sex. And he admires his friend's beauty in a hyperbolical level, perhaps a hyperbolical level, and he, in, a, in order to establish, establish his friend's beauty, Shakespeare compares his friend's beauty to the beauty of the season of summer. And we find and feel that Shakespeare's brilliance of poetry is also present here. And the comparison is poetic and with a signature touch of Shakespeare. His friend's beauty was unchangeable. His friend's beauty is more soft and temperate. And his beauty is not to be marred, not to be panicked, not to be doubted, and not to be attacked even by death. Whereas the season of summer, a dear season to the people of England, because the, the people of England go through a phase of hardship remaining in the cold weather for long months and when the season of summer comes they get a press lease of life they get a time of enjoyment because nature comes in a beautiful form it's uh, soft and beautiful uh, people don't have to uh, go through the hardship of chilly wintry weather and wind that's why this weather, the, this season of uh, summer is a dear and welcome season to the people of England. It's a beautiful season and Shakespeare himself admits it, but still he gives more credit to the beauty of his friend. He admits that the season of summer is beautiful, but he gives more credit to the beauty of his friend. And he gives example and reference that there are birds in every tree in the season of summer. But those beautiful birds, they fall, they sack because of the attack of rough winds. It is something negative in the beauty of the season of summer. But his friend's beauty has no negative side. And there's fluctuation in the beauty of the season, beauty of nature, but there is no fluctuation in the beauty of his friend. It is unchangeable, unfluctuated, and unfluctuating. But the season's beauty, the beauty of the season of summer is uh, fluctuating because mm, Every fair from fair sometimes declines. And sometimes to hurt the eyes of heaven signs. The sun gives hot rays, too hot 
and sometimes it is felt uh, by people it is also a bad and negative side of this season of summer and in this way he compares the beauty of the season of summer and the beauty of his friend and the summer is short spent the season of summer comes only to stay for two or three months but the beauty of his friend will stay for ever will last forever because he says in the eternal lines of time it exists and there is no fear there is no possibility of even the death to brag of its arrival to the beauty of his friend even the death does not come to disturb the beauty of his friend death does not boast to come to do its activity in the friends in his friend's beauty and the season of summer it changes it changes its hues it is beautiful but it is changeable it's fluctuating it's short lasting but the poet's friend's beauty is not fluctuating not short short lasting and not so hard so hers and so tough the sun as it shines sometimes too harshly but the poet's friend uh, is having a beauty that is more temperate and more graceful more soft and enjoyable than the beauty of the season of summer in this way shakespeare compares and he puts the comparison and justifies his stand justifies his desire of admiration for his friend it has become an eulogy and it gives true satisfaction to the readers of english literature and shakespeare also also became perhaps satisfied in writing such a successful sonnet and the comparison is for that point for that purpose of establishing the uniqueness the um, uh, oneness the uh, unique quality of his friend's beauty he wanted to establish this he admired his friend's beauty in such a way and he established his admiration he established his uh, friend's beauty in his sonnet sonnet number 18 thus we can prove that he um, compared and he took the help of comparison in his uh, poet in his sonnet number 18 so let me call it a day